Sid Toretto is a drift legend. With almost 90 million views on YouTube, you've likely seen his videos, but this is the kind of stuff he does. He's one of the best, if not the best drifter on the platform. And the most impressive part is, he's not one of those prodigy kids that started training at 8 years old. He only started drifting three years ago. Today we're talking about his drift style and the techniques he uses to impress everybody with his drift. That's because he drifts a plethora of different cars and tracks and to top it all off, he drifts in every game, not just simulators. Guys like a jack of all trades, only he's a drifter of all trades. When I started drifting on a wheel, I did a little bit of Forza Horizon 4 and then thought, nah I might. This ain't taking me anywhere, I gotta find a good simulator. So I went straight into a Seto Corsa thinking, this is gonna be it, I'm finally gonna train real drifting and become a pro. Little did I know, that would be the end for me. Without knowing mods were a thing, the game didn't feel like a game, it felt like a chore and I quickly stopped drifting. Everywhere in his social media, C. Toretto says he drifts for fun and that's what got me into drifting. But without having fun, we lose the power of will to put in the work and practice to become the best. That's why he drifts every type of game, to have fun and keep practicing, thus constantly improving. In his short drifting career, he had the chance to drift pretty much everything you can imagine, from FD cars to initial D cars to fast and furious cars to even buses. Yes, buses! In 2019, he bought a Thrustmaster TMX and started drifting in Forza Horizon 3. <gasps> That's the same game that got me into drifting! Though, in my case, I used the controller. That parking lot in Surfer's Paradise that I love so much! That place lit the spark he needed to get where he is today. At the time, he used to drift in third person because he found it easier. Starting easy and then evolving into gradually more difficult steps is the key to keeping anything interesting long term. Like eating soup with a spoon and then graduating to using the fork instead. In my case, I started drifting in third person with the controller and then switched to the first person view when I got my wheel, because that was the only way I could do it. Third person was really hard to me on the wheel. So I think the best advice here is, you do you. Whatever you find easier, it's gonna be the best for you. In the end, this boils down to personal preference, just like riding goofy or regular on a skateboard. Both are correct and some people choose one over the other. It's amazing to see how much his style evolved in so little time. In 2019, this is how his drifts looked like. Pay attention to the steering wheel. And now here's how he drifts in 2021. It's astounding to see how smooth his drift style got. Back then, his wheel was all over the place. Don't get me wrong, he was good but he was constantly doing small corrections. We could say that his drift style was a lot more active back then and now it's a lot more laid back. But also, these are two different games he's playing. And that's the beauty of it, he's capable of adapting to whatever situation the games throw at him, because he wasn't picky about the game he chose to train, he just had fun and learned a ton along the way. In that sense, he's a lot like Takumi from Initial D, he's just so bored by drifting that his hands don't even shake the wheel, I mean, it's that he adapts very quickly. Every couple days he posts a video where he's drifting in a different car, in a different track, in different conditions and drifting per perfectly smoothly, that's really cool, I'm not gonna lie. His smoothness comes from the throttle control. When I drift, I am usually stabbing the pedal on and off and sometimes I'm floating around the middle, but he never kicks the gas. He always transitions from not pressing to pressing slowly and smoothly. That, in turn, doesn't make the car twitchy and it's much easier to control the steering wheel. Ok, let me clarify, you're looking at his throttle and thinking, wait, he is chopping the pedal, how come you say he's smooth? Well, sometimes he has to go from clutch in, gas out, back to a full throttle drift. Apart from those, he might look choppy, but two things are at play here. One is he's doing small adjustments, so he's not like an on-off switch. And the other is that the accelerator has a small delay between command and action. So when the pedal sees this, the car sees this, which is much smoother. 
So yeah, his throttle control is the foundation on which his crazy smooth drifts are built. And now we get to the fun part. Talk about his technique. Or better, array of techniques. Just from watching a couple of his videos, I could see that he's just like me. Tall and handsome. Just kidding, that's what my mom tells me when I ask her. He watches tons of drift videos and always learns and incorporates new skills and techniques to his own drift style. By watching him drift, we can see basically every drift technique in action, though he has a preference in using mostly a handful of them. His technique is highly influenced by the type of car he prefers to drift. What he usually drifts are strong and independent cars, the ones that don't need to impress all the boys with that red dress on the 1996 prom night. No, it's powerful cars and he likes to drift them at high speeds. Tracks, togas, streets, doesn't matter, he's always on full sand. To initiate his drifts, he uses a combination of three main techniques. The first one is the power initiation. As he mainly uses high power machines, this is an obvious choice. You just hit the gas and let the power do the job. The second one is the one he uses the most. He loves using it to keep drifting and it's called weight transfer. By turning the wheel left and right, and left and then right, and timing that swinging motion with throttle inputs, the car's weight is transferred from one side to the other to make it have a tendency to keep drifting. It can also be used to initiate a drift. By timing the throttle just right, he keeps widening the line with his little motion, kind of an ass shape down the road, until the drift starts. When he wants big angle quickly, he does not hesitate to use the left foot brake technique, which, I've already told you, is not messing up a backflip landing. We'll talk about it shortly. And the third technique he uses to start drifting is to simply pull the handbrake. It also slows the car down to the perfect speed to take the next corner drifting. He doesn't use the handbrake that much, usually he's just correcting the line or slowing down before a hairpin turn. Actually, he uses a fourth technique too. In some cars, he strongly relies on it. It's the clutch kick in which C. Toretto taps the clutch while he's giving it just a little bit of gas. And that can either initiate a drift or keep it going. It's really useful in transitions, especially when he wants to flick the car to change direction quickly. Now, after he initiated a drift, He's usually very smooth in his inputs. That shows what we just talked about, that he adapts very quickly to the car and doesn't seem to be always adjusting and correcting the steering wheel. On the surface, he looks calm and ready. He shows you that he's got in the car, he has trained, he understands the machine, he is now one with the car, he dominates the situation and is now in control. So much so that he uses the very advanced technique of left foot braking. Before making this video, I've only heard of the technique being used in drifting maybe a couple of times and by people like pro drifter James Dean. And now I had to learn it. From what I could understand and try for myself, it's used in the middle of a turn to get more angle. In drift cars, sometimes the brake bias is set all the way to the front wheels. This way, the foot brake controls the front tires and the handbrake controls the rear tires. If you want to give the car more angle mid-corner, you can give it more gas or lightly tap the brakes. But if you hit the gas, the car is gonna go faster and sometimes you don't want that because it ruins your drift line. After all, you need to be at a certain speed when you get to the next corner. So, in cases like these, pro drifters usually left foot brake. Plus, it locks in the front wheel's line and you can more easily touch the outside zone. Ooh. If you think that's it, oh boy, you're mistaken. Remember what I said about starting easy and making it more challenging as you go? Because this guy has gone from easy mode to hard mode and now he's god mode. Drifting is like breathing for him, you know? He's on the ultimate level. That's just too easy, man. So we wouldn't be Sitoretto style if he didn't make it just a bit more fun. We're talking tricks, 360s, backwards entries, wall rides, and even dropping a wheel to make the stakes higher, drifting more fun, and his videos absolutely mesmerizing. Definitely check out his channel for more insane drifts. 